I really wanted it to start with you just stuck with your arms in the air because that would have been really funny to me. Mine just went, everyone's screen went black and then just swirling. Mm. Oh. Yeah, it was your internet and it was really funny because you were, yeah, and it does this. The... <laughs> and then that was it. And I was like, I'm going to hit go live and see what happens. We love. Anyway, hello and welcome to yet another Dev Famous Live. We love to see it. How is everyone feeling about reading this book? Interesting, in interesting okay. response. Um, let's go around, introduce yourself and tell me what you gave book eight out of so, five stars. I am Abby, as you can see. Mm -hmm. I gave it five stars. It is the first Skullduggery Pleasant book since book one in this reread that I've given five stars. Interesting. Becca? I'm Becca and that's her, the name is, I can't see which it is, and I gave it four stars, I mean I see the average of these are all at four stars, but I did really, really love it, as always. Excellent. And Lizzie? Hi, I'm Lizzie, as, uh, there, there, that's the name. <laughs> all of us! Uh, I really like this one, it was a really, really high four stars but it made me irrationally angry and upset so it didn't get back to us interesting interesting and yes obviously i'm glad it am the... oh look at you doing it right first time i don't know if you noticed but two seconds ago i just twitched this shoulder to be like no it's this side and then it was like there it is but you didn't realize I, didn't the life <laughs> I gave it four stars um which is the average for skull Duggery. i really really like them yes there were things that I was not as happy about, uh, but we will discuss. So I'm going to start with the first banner, which is the non, no, yes, non-spoiler. No spoilers allowed. So obviously because it's book eight, there's very, very little that we can talk about. We're not going to hang about on this very off, like very long. Um, but obviously with a lot of the characters, there's some cool like character development and stuff like that. So is there anything anyone wants to say that isn't going to give the game away to anyone who's potentially watching before we just skip to spoiler town yes this first this is the first book where i've gone this is not middle grade anymore this is ya <laughs> this is the first one where i've realized that it's gone to the ya territory uh, yeah. which i haven't this i haven't had the feeling of that before so this is the first one i've gone oh damn yeah we're not we're not reading middle grade anymore <laughs> we're not in kansas anymore what was it about that like what was it about this book in particular that made you go it's a ya now not middle grade the content and also um Valkyrie growing up. Okay. I can't say much more than that because No, I was gonna say I really wanted to see like what you came out with because we've discussed before on Berries and Books my thoughts on the difference between adult and YA isn't necessarily the age of the characters, but the content and the pacing and how that works. And I think there is a difference between these three and the last three we read because these are far slower in pace the content is darker that's not to say that previous content wasn't dark because we've already seen police brutality and murder and like loads of loads of stuff but the way it's written in these books is more mature yeah yeah, and I think because we've been seeing it from a younger person's perspective who's now growing up, it's a lot more in your face almost because you kind of see it as like a, a childish kind of point of view before, which is still there and it's still dark. But in this one, it's like, oh, okay, we're all kind of grown ups. Now. Yeah. I think it's a natural um, progression for yeah. a series like this. Like if you've got this many books at the length that they're at with the style of story that it has, it was kind of inevitable. Like, my internet is so bad. Uh, <laughs> um, but like, so theoretically, it's not going to, but if there was going to be a third season, I would expect it to then hit adult, just mm -hmm. with the way that it's progressing. It would then just be like, no, this is an adult book now. Um, it seems to just kind of naturally be moving itself that way. Mm. Interesting, interesting. Anything else you want to add in the non-spoiler section? Or shall I just just go for it? Just go for it. Just go for it. We're here. 
we're ready. I'm so excited because I actually really like this book. I think this is a lot of interesting content. I know that with the last one, I had real beef with the storyline of it being like time travel and shit like that. I like that there was stuff set up in that one that paid off in this one. That's always fun. There are a lot of things in this that have been set up several books ago. So I think that's really interesting. Um, but I have a list. So if you're okay with me just working my way through my list, and then if you guys want to add... Of course you have a list. Of course you have a flipping list. I'm not even surprised anymore. At least um, someone's organised. <laughs> yeah, so I just... I basically, I wrote a list of things that are noteworthy and then, like, thought we'd discuss them. So the first noteworthy thing that happened that I felt we needed to discuss is the children of the spider starting a war. How did you guys feel about how the war builds up and could you compare to any other books you've read that have had war in them because for me this stands out as probably the most realistic preamble for war that i've seen outside of like historical fiction i feel it's like very... oh Sorry. you go you go Ali. you go you go you go Okay, okay, oh well. Um, it kind of <laughs> felt you like... You, 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 you. I feel like the build-up with the Children of the Spider has been such like an under kind of undertone to all of the books so far, right? They've always been the outliers. It was kind of inevitable. Now, what happens with, like, you know, Ravel and all of that bullshit, which made me go... <gasps> As I was reading it, like I think I gasped about five or ten times reading this book. Like I sat in my five or ten <laughs> between five and ten. I'm surprised I didn't go. Are you okay? Because the amount of time I was just in my bed yesterday going, <gasps> "Oh my god!" Mm. <laughs> um, it was kind of an, an inevitable like arc, I guess, with them that they were gonna try and take over and do a coup. Um, but yeah, I think it was felt very like you could see it happening. You can see like they've been living in like poverty and stuff and being treated as next to nothing mm. and they've got this power and of course they were left in the sanctuary by themselves with a really powerful machine like why why wouldn't they try you know <laughs> it gets me that they actually trusted them with that and they didn't actually like go through everybody who's raw haven and like test them somehow like but that's that's the thing it's like even if they had done tests on everyone they thought was in Raw Haven, in the last book, it's hinted out. In this, in this book, they specifically say that you can walk around the town and not say the same, the same people more than twice. Like, there's so many people. And the hint is that there are more people living underground than are, like, visible around town which is interesting because it's all it's a sorcerer safe zone right so the only people that live there are sorcerers it's not like it's got a human population like haggard does where it's a mixture of the two right so it's really interesting that they couldn't do that because they had no idea of the scale of the population to then test them but the whole time they're looking at outside sources of like who it could be that's attacking them you know Derek Landy's going to like pull a switcheroo and it's going to be someone inside. And it, it, it had feels. I had so many feelings about it. But anyway, Abby, you were going to say something um, when Lizzie was as well. So, Yeah, it, it was basically that it felt completely inevitable, like 100% inevitable. But at the same time, because he had it as an undercurrent, mm. it's not like, oh, of course this is happening. Like it was inevitable and also not predictable mm. like it you know what i mean like mm. obviously like, we knew all of us were kind of like yeah it's gonna happen but you don't know exactly when and the kind of specificities of it were done like really well i think but it, it was always gonna happen i like that and so it's, it's a fair balance between inevitable and predictable because i hate a book that's predictable i find it so frustrating but i like a book where the outcome is inevitable where it, and basically it's just how I put the pieces together if I'm putting the pieces together as I go and then I don't need a whole chunk to get to the end result that's predictable but if I'm picking up those pieces and there's almost too many pieces for me to get there and I get to the end and then they're put back into an order for me yeah it's inevitable and thank you for explaining it to me like that I prefer 
to one where it's I'm like, like a, oh I guess it's a really good it analogy well. for like a jigsaw puzzle like we get that a lot for like oh yeah this plot fits together like a jigsaw puzzle but this actually does in that you have all of the pieces you know what the picture is going to end up looking like but until you actually figure everything out you don't know where the pieces all slot in mm. yeah yeah I really I really liked it I, I'm the same Hannah I don't like predictable plots so this doesn't this made this threw me through a loop this entire book so it definitely wasn't predictable but it was definitely an inevitability that you kind of was always building to but you're never sure when it was going to hit and I really enjoyed the way it hit in this in this book like, yeah. yeah but that's what i mean about um like the war feeling realistic right because no one's ever declared war and it's been from like one thing and i think that's something that fr really frustrates me in ya fantasy is it's like well if you do this one thing wrong then we're on a precipice of war like the war no that's not how it works war is built on tensions right and it can be tensions from a bunch of different factors and what i really liked about this when it came to the war is you have you don't have two sides because a war is never just two sides you have about four or five because each of the leaders groups have their own agenda for what they want to do and when those dynamics change because the antagonist changes you see like a shift like that again feels really authentic considering it's a book about wizards <laughs> like it's really interesting to me that they like Derek Landy has got like such a great balance of and I assume it's because being Irish living in Ireland having experienced the conflicts and stuff that develop there of course it's going to feel authentic of course it is so I just think that uh, yeah it was really interesting and not dumbed down for a younger audience but definitely i felt like my hand was being held through this war it's like okay these guys are scared because of these reasons these guys are scared because of these reasons these guys want power for these reasons and it all felt really um yeah i guess i just want to call it authentic again for for a fantasy it was very authentic i guess especially with it being kind of middle grade YA cusp so it's aimed at regardless of the age bracket children mm -hmm. and the fact that it also has the magic system as well and this war is a backplot this complicated mm -hmm. political all of these puzzle pieces is a backplot so you kind of need the hand holding so that yeah. you don't forget what's happened because oh when's he mentioned that like you read like adult books and it's like he mentioned this 300 pages ago for a throwaway line no i don't know what's happening <laughs> so the the hand holding like lets you kind of bridge that gap of okay we're moving this now from the back to the front i've explained everything very clearly you should be aware of where we're at this mm. should work rather yeah. than leaving kids mm -hmm. to read this and what is going on it's kind of the tour guide, isn't it? And on your left, you will see this is uh, Valkyrie's inner conflict. And uh, on your right, we have external conflict of a literal war. Like, it feels like that. It's that kind of, like, balance, which I appreciate. That would be the most incredible commentary. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. I'll do a commentary for it, and I'll be like, <laughs> and here we have. <laughs> yes. I can see you doing that for sure i might i might just pick a film um and like do like a live stream where we watch the film with no sound and i just explain the plot to you as we go <laughs> you should do that but okay. it should be something you've not watched yeah then, oh my god that right, would be amazing. Yeah. Like one of the most confusing right. movies ever do yeah. it for like a really confusing inception like movie yes i was gonna say pick a film that we've not seen now i don't know about lizzie but i know about me and becca for me, that would be very easy. Very, very easy. <laughs> film I haven't seen. Like, just, just pick a major movie mm. and I've probably not seen it, but um, y you'll struggle with her. Mm. Mm. You'd have to send me a list. I'd have to send you a list. <laughs> yeah, thing same. Though, it wouldn't necessarily, the thing is, I think it would be funnier if you had seen the film, but I hadn't. And I'm trying to explain to you how this film works. Well, that like, is a imagine. very short list between the two of us. <laughs> That's fine. If, even if we did just the four of us and it was just a li little private thing, because like it was really funny. Um, obviously, a couple of weekends ago, I went and met up with Olivia and I introduced her to Austin Land. 
and it's one of my favorite films and every now and then Olivia's just like so is this is this how it ends is what about this and I'm like I'm not telling you like I'm not telling you and inside I'm literally like biting my fist like don't give the ending away because I'm so bad for it that I think it'd be really funny to watch me do that especially if, imagine if it was like a classic so it was something like the bbc adaptation of pride and prejudice that's got colin firth in it like something like that would I be so funny i've shockingly never seen that one it's, oh, it's, good. it's so it's good. good it's, it's good. amazing yeah. or like lord of the rings oh <laughs> but only the first God. 20 minutes <laughs> And I'm like, right, so there's a bunch of guys, right? Like, they, 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 they all hate each other. They're all from, like, different places. And on your right, you'll see Mordor. <laughs> Although oh Mordor God. is left, but we won't, we won't talk about that. Well, I, that I guess it depends. Well, no, if, you're you, if, you're like, if you're heading in this direction, it would be the opposite, wouldn't it? Because you would be looking to your left. I would be pointing. Oh, good point. All right, good wouldn't point. I? I'd be like, and on this side, on stage left, you know? Good point. All right then. I'm just. I'm very nervous. That was a complete agreed. bullshit answer. Like I don't. I don't know how you just agreed with me because I was. Yeah, I think I just gave up, Hannah. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. I was just like, okay, you do you. <laughs> you should definitely do this. Like, just maybe I will. Maybe I will. If I if I get to um, 700 subscribers, I will whatever film you want me to <laughs> commentate on. I think. Wait, can I pick the film? Yes. If you were going to pick the film, what film would you pick? Right, the thing is, if it was a film that I'd already seen, obviously I don't know whether you've seen it or not, but I have a one in mind. If it's one that I haven't seen, I would need time to like look through lists of like all oh, the films that you should have seen. No, if, like, it was a film that, if it was a film that you have seen that you think would be funny to watch me commentate on. If you haven't seen it, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> I have seen it, but that would be hilarious. Because, like, every time I watch that film and the fucking child catcher comes out, it's, like, harrowing. I'm like, and here we see a classic paedophile. Like, it's just <laughs> yes. so harrowing. And there's, like, in the scene at the end, I assume every everyone here has seen this film, right? Like, yes. I'm not, okay, cool. So there's a scene where, like, the kids riot, right? And there is one kid that grabs a jug of wine and just pours it down some lady's top. And I remember as a child being like, that's weird. And as an adult, I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's sexual assault. Like, that's weird, right? And it literally just goes, I'm like, that's not okay. That's like, not okay. over the head, I could comprehend. It's the, like, extraction. And, like, like, I guess, like, it's meant to be, like, from a kid's point of view, just innocent, make sure it's in the clothes. But, like, the fact that the most easily accessible bit is the tittage, it's like... <laughs> I see nothing wrong with my statement. No, nothing at all. And when um, in December I have to do a video every single day and I put together a video of out of context live streams, that will be going in it. <laughs> I have a feeling I'm going to feature on that quite a lot. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. <laughs> I've got I've still got a long old list. Uh, oh, because I was just about to suggest another film. Never mind. Go on, go on, go on. Go on. Rocky Horror. <gasps> I've seen that. I yes. have seen it. Yes. 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 Oh, um, Sorry, my cat is trying to break in. One sec. I would love to see you try and explain any of the songs in Rocky Horror with no. They don't sound. make any fucking sense, though. It's that's literally the just point. Like... Yeah, that's oh, the are point. They aliens? Are they actors? Nobody knows. That's the point. Or just the let it with... roll over you. Or um, not Tree House of Horror. You know the one with Audrey too, the plant. Oh, Little Shop of Horrors. That one. Ali. I'm going to ignore your thing to not yell at you and yell at you. I'm going to be it's fine. We're not talking about the book right now, so it's fine. Instead, we're talking about that little kitty. Yes, look at his little face. He's being very needy. Are you burping? Because that's kind of gross. <laughs> Why is it a surprise? He looked at me like he was surprised to see me then. He kind of went... <laughs> You're not supposed to look at me. You're just supposed to pet me. Do not perceive me. <laughs> you beautiful. 
because you're stupid. So uh, Lizzie knows this already, but this asshole, this absolute turd of a cat yesterday knocked an entire cup of tea into a box of books for my shop. 90 quid's worth of stock ruined. And look at and his yet, little fucking face. Doesn't yet, give a but shit. Still gets cuddles. And still gets I cuddles. can't be mad at him. I was. I. I thought he hid for two hours whilst I was like stomping around and getting really angry. But I can't stay mad. Not when he looks this. Look. Look what a derpy face that is. Like, could you stay mad? Because I can't. And he knows. Look, he's got me wrapped around his little finger. Couldn't give less of a shit. <laughs> anyway, the next thing on my list is skullduggery's consistency at awful gift giving. Oh, <laughs> he did, he did is this the stick? stick? This is the it's stick. Not, it's not a bad gift, though, actually. It's quite baller. I'd want a stick like that, thanks. Yeah. It, no, can it was a cool stick. stick. It was a cool stick. Still a it stick. It can stun people. If I can whack them over the head and then they fall over and knock down, I'm like, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. As someone with no fighting ability, I would love the stick. Yeah. Yeah. But also, the fact that they just hit each other over the head with it at one point. Mm -hmm. It's like, what are you, five? I love that she's like, I'm not going to hurt anyone with this. And he literally just smacks her. It's my favourite thing. Also, Ali, I may take you up on this because for real realsies, these books need to go. So. I'm sorry, the fact that you ignored that her new cat looks a bit like a baby Mozart. Um, that's only because I don't think it does. It's a very different type of ginger, so... Isn't it like a tabby ginger? Rather yeah. Than Ali, send pictures of the cat. Yeah. Oh, um, Ali, also, Lizzie has seen photos of your cat, because the moment you shared it with me, I then showed it to everyone that I was talking to on Zoom, so... But you also need to put it on Twitter, because I haven't been able to look at it properly, because all I saw was a picture of a phone screen. Um, so... Why did you kiss his head to the Mario theme tune? Why not? Because he hates it, that's why. <laughs> Is that, no, Love the face. He just fucking loves the attention, honestly. Yes, he does. So Mozart has a bib, obviously, and then like little socks. Don't bite me, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> He's still purring. Can you hear him? He's still purring. You need to do it. Paint me like one of your French cats. I've decided when I've got a Patreon, one of the perks is going to be weekly videos of this cat, like a full on vlog of his week. And I'm going to commentate on it. I wasn't going to before, but now if we're going to do commentary on everything, <laughs> I'm Hannah, going to narrate his week. Hannah, I'd like to remind you that you hate doing vlogs as it is. Are you sure you want to commit to vlogging Mozart? Look, I know that I record at least 20 minutes a week of just Mozart being asleep, so... It's much easier content to make than vlogging me, to be honest. Fair you enough. You can take it like Attenborough. Yes, exactly. exactly. And here we see the young Mozart sleeping. Snoozing, yet again. Always snoozing. In yeah. its common habitat, the bed. Mm. Well, actually, I've got like a Billy bookshelf that's like right next to my bed, and he likes to sleep on top of it and then judge me. <laughs> right, what I want is for the commentary over this not to be Attenborough, however much I love the man, mm -hmm. but instead to be you pretending to be Mozart. Yeah. Oh my god, what an idiot. Just like little little cat voice. Cat voice. Thing is, to me his voice is a lot more like, come on, stop. Come on. <laughs> come and feed me. Because he does, he like he cries. He's not as bad as his sister. His sister, for some reason, she's got a real thing about sound and she will try to find the best spot for sound to like echo and what she'll do is she'll just move around the room to like different parts and be like ah ah <laughs> like, like, like different angles just like ah ah <laughs> like and it's my favorite thing she's so funny whereas he just kind of cries and bites me why are you doing this you haven't bitten me all week and then you bit me yesterday and you're biting me again today <laughs> wow Mozart like you put yourself into these positions, buddy. I know, such an a-hole. Anyway, right. So I'm going to set up a cat Patreon. <laughs> That's happening. You're on the internet. You should have known that cats was the way to Patreon. 
I mean, that's why he's in all of my videos. <laughs> that and because I have no way of keeping him out of my room. Do you mind? Your face. Do you mind? Anyway, next on my list is um, Myra and Fletcher having the same convo <laughs> as Fletcher and Valkyrie, except this time it's Myra that tried to uh, say I love you and then tried to kill him. <laughs> a, a little casual plot twist. <laughs> No, I remembered that when she was first introduced in the previous book. And I was messaging yeah. Abby going, is she the one who tries to kill him? And I was like, yes, yes, this yeah. is the murderous one. Yeah. And you guys are like, oh, it's a cute relationship. He's finally happy. And me and Becca just sat there like. I really wanted that for him. I really, I feel it would be good for Valkyrie to see him happy with someone else for a start. And then for her to be like, I love you. And he was just like, Thanks. <laughs> like, I just really like that because I'm almost sure that it's verbatim the conversation that Val and Fletcher had. I want to check now. Do it. Get the book and check. No. They're both standing on the bed. Yeah. Which, as I've you mentioned, my before, ankle. Oh, but you do it every episode. <laughs> I'm also. I don't actually. I don't actually. If it's going to hurt your ankle, don't actually do that. I'm going to do it on one foot. Okay. Oh, this please don't fall. Please don't hurt yourself. Where I'm not in the <laughs> Great start. <laughs> you look like one of my neighbours is hurt a foot and is on crutches. Which book do they break up in? Five. Right. I think. A while ago. <laughs> I've slept since then. I can't remember. <laughs> True. <laughs> I didn't wake up till 12 today. I don't know what's going on. Got them. I had lunch an hour ago. Like, this is how messed That's up. That's not lunch. That was lunch. No, it wasn't. I'm having no. dinner after this. Okay. My weekends are messed up on timing. I'm fine during mm. the week. It hits Saturday and everything goes out the window. Okay, so Lazo maybe... just um, jumped into Ali's... Yeah, oh, maybe Lazlo and Mozart are related. I'd like to point out that he's now in Kieran's chair again. Just chilling. His favourite spot. He hasn't left there, like, all weekend, has he? Mm. Yeah. yeah. This is why I don't make a head start of reading the books next. Because Kieran was going to join us, except he decided he didn't want to, and he's now two books ahead of us, which is outrageous. That's just rude. Right? Not even I'm that far into this series. That's not there fair. You there you go. <laughs> no. Not fair. Anyway, are we waiting for Abby to find things? Or what's I'm happening? I'm trying to figure out what book it's in. Okay. Okay, well, whilst that happens, um, yeah, I was really disappointed then when she turned out to be evil. I get why. I get why. She's a sleeper cell. I get that. But, like, that kind of annoyed me. I kind of loved it. Then I like it when anyone turns out to be evil. To be perfectly honest, I'm always, I'm always waiting for a villain to just appear out of nowhere. And when she tried to stab him after saying she loved him, I was like, oh, Fletcher, oh, dude, not again. I just like, I just love the fact that Fletcher's got such a bad taste in women. Yeah, yeah. he's got a type, yeah. hasn't he? My yeah. favourite bit with regards to that was when later on someone else is having a go at Fletcher for like not treating Valkyrie right or not being deserving of Valkyrie. And he's like, if you want to win Valkyrie's attention, boss her around, try and save her life. Always be there to be protector. And I'm just like, wow, this is amazing. That's such bitter ex-boyfriend shit. And I loved it. But it's also, it, it, it also isn't because yeah. he knows that she doesn't want him just because of his attitude anyway so he's yeah. like you know what she'll have fun you yeah. go do all the stuff that she yeah. hates yeah she'll have fun yeah it'll be funny kind of for me really to watch you protective. crash and burn yeah. yeah it was almost like he was sending her a gift of hey you can go eviscerate another person off you go I love that. yeah we do love a bit of an evisceration don't we oh yes i'm in a halloween mood it's all about the Stabbing gore at the moment. Stabbing gore. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, I think 
I think the line where he, where Myra was like, don't try and cut the knife out of the skull may really crack me up. I was like, oh, is, are we going to have an Excalibur moment where he suddenly gets the head? Yeah. That's all I could think was. Yeah. I just love that, like, when, like, he's like, you're trying to kill me. And she's like, well, you should have said you love me back. <laughs> like, yeah. like, you had a way of getting out of this. You failed it. You fucked it. <laughs> if you're emotionally available, you would have survived. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm still laughing at the thanks. <laughs> that tickled me. Hmm. How, how are we doing, Abby? It's in Deathbringer. Okay. And it's somewhere in here. Okay. You should have tabbed it. Yeah, we didn't think we would come back to discuss it later. Yeah, good point. <laughs> Two books later. What what like? gonna oh, take me time. Okay, right. I'll move on to the next thing on my list then. Uh, the next thing on my list is Finbar poisoning the mug, not the tea, and becoming a badass to protect his son. Loved it. Poison the mug, not the tea. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I thought it was I so clever. It. I enjoyed Some the whole conversation. I enjoyed the whole conversation to be honest, where he's like, yeah, and if that psychic had seen someone coming to murder them, and it's like, yeah, it's because I didn't do the tea, bitch. I murdered the cup. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. Is, and you can just tell the guy's like, ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the thing, is like, did you really think that the psychic wouldn't see that? Like, I, I feel like if I was an assassin and I was going for a psychic, I would plan three different ways to kill them. And then I would just try to bump into them randomly and pick a fourth way to kill them on the moment, like, in the moment. I've always liked Finbar, though, and this was, like, him proving himself that he was worth liking. It was just, like, I I sent my wife away, and, and you weren't going to make my son an orphan, and I was like, oh, Finbar. Yeah, Pulling that through. was so sweet. And the fact that he was like, oh, it, it, it's it's quieter than it is usual. Like, again, Derek Landry is just sprinkling in those little things, those little heads up to us, the audience, that not, not all is as it seems. And it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, no, I knew you were coming. I knew you were going to kill me, and I knew you were going to make my son an orphan. So I decided to fuck you up instead. Because what's so fun is that he's usually such a scatterbrain, and it was so fun to actually see him organised for five minutes and be like, actually, I'm not just the scatterbrain comic relief here. Well, I, and I think also it hints to the fact that having had the revenant in him, it has like unlocked that part of his brain that like is that higher thinking. Because like they talk about how people that have had revenants in them before have then been desperate to get back that power. And for him, whilst the power has opened a door that is, like, too aggressive, the the insight that he now has makes him less of a scatterbrain. But he's still got that personality. Like, he's still able to, like, banter with the guy. The guy has loads of opportunities where he could just not fucking do it. I think that was one of my favourite Finbar moments, though, is when Tannis talks to him and he's like, I'm not talking to you. I'm, I'm not. It's too weird. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It really tickles me. <laughs> I've got something important, but it's not. It's just Scrabble. Of course. I'm just gonna have to do this research at a later date. Okay, oh, but I'm know. I'm gonna say for this live, same conversation. Derek Landy just copied and pasted. That's what I would do. Yeah. Why write write up two breakups when you could just repeat the same breakup twice? It's not the breakup. Well, that's the it, issue. Mm, it kind of is. It's the same conversation it's, of like, I love the, you. Mm. But that's separate from the breakup. In Val and Fletcher, it's separate from the breakup. Because mm. I found the breakup. Yeah, I know they have like a whole different thing later, but like there is a bit where like, he's like, I love you. And she's like, thanks. Like to me, they're not equals then. That's it's the it's the start of the slippery slope, you know. Abby's now going to get evidence to prove me wrong. I'm just cracking up at Ali's like thing about confusing her husband. In the park. Aromatic sleep. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, next on the list 
is a certain betrayal and a certain death. This was one of the things me and Abby were talking about last time when we were doing the, is it this one? Is it this one? This was the so Like, is he the one with the golden eyes? He has to be the one with the golden eyes. But maybe he's not the one with the golden eyes. I was, I've been waiting for someone to mention the man with the golden eyes for the last, like, three or four live streams. Ever since the first, character, uh, the first time the character turned up, I've been waiting for someone to mention him, and no one did. I mean, I didn't, because of that. And I was like, I ain't risking nothing. Yeah. You lot bring it up. That's that's separate. But I, didn't, I didn't realise it was worth bringing up. I didn't know it was a thing. I've never read these books before. I read the first two before. I've never read this one before. What am I supposed to be looking for? I don't know. Well, I've got to say, I was a bit behind with this, and Hannah had posted a TikTok about being upset with this book. And I said right at the beginning, why do I feel like Ghastly is going to die? Right at the beginning, I'd like to point out, as I was reading, I was like, oh my god, something's going to happen to Ghastly. And Hannah, to to your credit, didn't say or do anything. It was so hard. <laughs> it was so hard not to tell you. Well... I watched your TVR where you were like, um, you feel like someone was going to die. And I messaged Abby going, she's got no idea. <laughs> that whole and scene. also there's, there's stuff that all of you, because remembering that I'm, I'm the only one up to date, like all the way through. So we're now reaching the point where Becca is almost up to where she was. There's stuff that all of you have said that happens. Oh. You've also said a load of shite. Like, Obviously. don't get me wrong. You've said a lot of shite. But there's some things where I'm like, make a little note of that one. Mm -hmm. so make a list. And then be like, yeah, you were right here, 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 and here. There's something specifically that Lizzie said last time. Interesting. Oh. Guess he's going back to watch that straight after this. <laughs> Oh, I will be so happy if Alice is evil. If it's Alice being evil, I am made for life. I won't even, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> oh, but Alice is so tiny. Yeah, but like, the like, fucking Stephanie reflection bullshit is like, oh, here, here, have a really powerful weapon. But That's it's okay because you can touch it because you can, you've got the. Uh, Sorry, what was this? An origin story. <laughs> an origin story. I love that. But wouldn't it be so funny if Alice turns evil at like five so she's a tiny toddler being evil? Yeah. That would be great. That'd be hilarious. But I find, I find evil characters that actually have a motivation, even if that motivation makes complete sense or makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. I don't think a five-year-old has any motivation beyond sticking on Paw Patrol and eating some Jaffa Cakes. Well. Ooh, Jaffa Cakes. If that vision that they saw this time with Alice also being with the parents comes true, maybe that would be the villain origin story where she's actually going to take down Marcus. Mm, you know, maybe. maybe that's what's going to. I'm probably talking a load of shit now, but I. <laughs> I like, yeah. Those are those things where you say. I am trying stuff. to keep the most neutral face possible, so <laughs> I do not tell you whether you are creepy accurate or really fucking wrong. This is the thing, is like, you've come, both of you have come a really long way in your poker faces. Because <laughs> I remember the first one you came to where you were like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> no, mass, mass improvement, well done. The thing is, I think it helps now that essentially I'm the only one. Obviously, for the next book, still me and Becca. But for any, like, long plot points, I'm now the only one, so I don't have... Becca's face also trying not to say something, which then makes me laugh, which then makes it helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Put it this way, I can't remember a thing of what happens in this next book. Interesting. Interesting. I can't remember a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, see, I... As I read it. Yeah. See, That'll be what happens. I don't have that luxury because where Kieran has been listening to the audiobook and got ahead of me. He forgot that he was like, cause, so he's been texting me updates as and when he gets to them. you. Yeah, big time. So, yeah. Okay, I'm really I don't want to, to spoil one. Lizzie, but we want to know. So, like, can you can you tell us later, like via message, what he spoiled you for? Don't spoil Lizzie. Obviously not. Obviously or Ali. 
You've been doing very well with not spoiling me though, Hannah. You've been very good. I've That's said fine. things. I've said things and I said, don't actually tell me, but <laughs> It's really Sometimes hard you just thing. need like someone else to be like, oh my god, what if this? What happens to this person? And you don't want an answer. Mm. You just want to say, what happens? So the thing is, I do sometimes want the answer because I find it so much more soothing when I know how it ends. The difference is what Kieran told me isn't how it ends. So I was just like, don't you, you ruined it, you ruined it. So Anyway, I thought that's to look forward to. Um, for me, the betrayal thing was harder to take than the specific death. Like, I think the fact that it was ghastly hurt, right? Because he already nearly died once before, and that broke my heart. So I think, I think the fact that it's someone me, who put him in power or had him put him in power. For me, the thing that was worse, on top of everything, is the fact that he still it feels like he's pretending and he isn't in his own head like honoring ghastly mm. like he's like no you don't get to talk bad of him like he's a fantastic human being you, you've just literally stabbed him in the back both yeah. figuratively and literally with a knife yeah. you don't get to exult about how fantastic of a human being he is and how he's worth seven million children of the spider when you see that yeah like, think, uh, even if he does think that, like, it's that's more of a kick in the gut to be like, you're so willing for this stupid fucking vision that you have to murder someone that you think is that fantastic mm -hmm. and also is a close friend. But don't forget, he also killed another one of the dead men as well in that scene. And it's like, you went through years of war with these people mm -hmm. and then you've gone and done that, knowing yeah. so well that Skullduggery will come after you. <laughs> You have a death sentence. Yeah. It's like the like you feel so strongly about this thing that you're trying to do, which is pointless and stupid and wrong, because he's like, Oh yeah, we're better than mortals. No. You ain't. The walking skeleton can tell you that. The walking skeleton. He's a bit more than just a walking skeleton. He can talk as well. Sorry, walking talking skeleton. <laughs> Well, I nearly threw the book across the room when this that's, thing happened. That's just reminded me, as like the quick interlude, that in one of my recent videos, I don't fucking know which, um, I made the mistake of saying a living detective. Good I think work. it was my wrap up. And yeah. literally I caught myself mid-sentence, living detective. <laughs> mm. yeah. I mean, it's technically true. Uh, Mm, I'm dead. I'm dead, detective. Like, a point of, like, let alone a living detective. And I was like, does my brain think all detectives are dead? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Apparently. Yes. But did you, were you going to say something else, Lizzie? I thought you were going to say something. Oh, I was. I was just saying, I nearly threw my book across the room when that happened. Uh, I gasped very loudly. It would probably sound like I was about to have a heart attack because I was like, <gasps> no! <laughs> No. <laughs> the worst part of it for me was this whole book with Valkyrie becoming part of the dead men. You had them all talking about their war stories and being built up as this really tight knit group. And then Ravel just being like, ah, oh, well, fuck that, you know, bye. <laughs> and isn't it Ravel that has like some of the best stories? Because like, I swear it's Ravel that they correct at one point. Because like, someone's like, and then he like did this and he fought this woman. And he's like, no, I spent three days in her house. Is that what you mean? And that he's yeah. like, no, I like I specifically like no, that's not how it happens. <laughs> like, and it's just like, but he's the one reminiscing, and it's like, I think that's the thing. Is like, I felt, oh, I felt so betrayed, and like the whole time you're you're waiting for what's her face, Spider Lady, Madam Mist, to like fuck everyone over, and then it's like, no, no, it was him the whole time, the whole time. And the memory making, him like recounting everything, makes sense as well because if he's going to betray everyone for this cause that he thinks is so worth it, of course he's going to be thinking about everything that they did. Yeah. But also, the fact that he was like, oh, he did some wondrous heroic thing, and no, he was just spending a night in some woman's bed, mm. that is one of the little things that makes it YA. Mm. That couldn't go into a middle grade because most, you've got to like at least be acceptable to the most innocent level of middle grade 
Well, and even if you, if you were an adult me, reading it to your child and you know what they mean. Yeah. But also, like, if I read that at nine years old, little nine-year-old me would not understand. I would nine-year-old me would understand because I'd watched James Bond, so I, I knew what I that was had, about. <laughs> I had not. I was very innocent until about 11, and then I went full evil. Um but yeah, so like nine-year-old me reading that wouldn't have understood at all. Would mm. not have comprehended that they were having sex. Would not have, no, no bells would have been. No bells. No bells here. Well, I will just say. The, the little bell doesn't ding. I will just say Dark Ass's punishment for Rabble was, it, it paid off. It was a good payoff. And I was like, oh, so that's what you saw, Valkyrie. That that was you dishing out punishment for killing your friend. And oh, no, then, don't go there. You'll scream in pain. Let me make you scream in pain. And then it's like, oh, so you sent Ghastly to his death without realising it. It just hurt. It just really hurt. And this entire time, I was waiting for something to happen to Ghastly because he was put into danger at the beginning of the book. Then it was fine, and then he gets murdered, and I'm like, why do you keep doing this? If, if, also, if he's dead. Mm. this is something that I've wanted to say for multiple live streams now, and I can finally say it. This means that Ghastly and Tannis can never happen. They got, like, what, a week? They got two days. You just made my entire being sink. <laughs> but I hadn't thought of that yet, and that makes me very sad. Every time you guys have brought up the relationship, oh, can we get Tanith back? Maybe her and Ghastly. And every time yeah. I'm like, no, because he's fucking dead. <laughs> that was me as well. I was just like, don't say anything. It is, though, but that, again, classic Landy, because I'm so busy looking over here, waiting for Tanith to get her soul back. Oh, 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 you, oh, you killed him? Thanks. Now I'm but twice as sad. But, but I'm glad well, he's back. <laughs> on the other hand, Tanith is back and I'm very, very happy about it. <laughs> but it's like, it's like, Ghastly was like the comfort character because it was sort of like, oh, right, Ghastly's here, everything's going to be okay. And now all of a sudden he's not there and it's like, oh, no, nothing's going to be the same ever again. Mm. And also, what now happens to the Midnight Hotel? Because the mm. guy who runs it's now dead. So what happens there with all the remnants and everything else in that hotel? I'm genuinely asking because I can't remember. I mean, I know if I was Tanith with a revenant inside me, what I would do, but... but I, no, think, no, no, I, I think now. Well, I think that Tanith is going to do the whole thing, you know, when she got saved by that dude who was like, I have a revenant inside me, we don't have to all be bad. Like, we can... Do, I think that's what's going to happen with Tanith, where she will become one with the revenant and, like, her old self will start coming out with, like, the slight revenant evil rather than like i'm gonna cut this person's head off because i can lol because um, i can lol i can't remember i also don't think let out all of them because then it'll be a lot less fun for her <laughs> only her faves only her faves yeah only her buddies jeff <laughs> jeff get yourself to the crack in the door quickly quickly no not steve <laughs> steve fuck off steve <laughs> not having you out here Pay him i off. also love that with all these fantasy names we went for jeff and steve <laughs> Blade! Blade! Not you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I have vague memories of what happens with the Midnight Hotel. But okay. nothing concrete. Okay. To the point where I couldn't even check it with Becca because it's, it's like literally it's floating in, I'm, my, in my head. I'm going to make a note um, that literally just says Abby has vague rememberings about the midnight hotel in the hopes that oh, i remember to ask you next time when we when we got there um next on my list is dark Hess returning for good uh and stephanie slash the reflection being a dick is this the part where i just turn off my camera well no we'll just discuss the fact that dark Hess in this book says that she's back for good because that's how it's described and then you don't mention future books because that would be boring like you we just discuss what's here or take a nap that also works 
can we just talk about that scene where Dark S comes out and she's getting fired at in the pyramids and half of her limbs come off? And how well that was done where it was inside of her head. Hmm. So good. But with the two of them like fighting about like, oh, I guess you shouldn't have gone that way. Like that was so twisted. I loved that. And the thing is, I was listening to it as an audiobook as well. So you can literally like hear her snark as it goes. It's so clever. I love that she is now dressed as a bride of blood tears because I'm not being funny. If I was a witch, I would also be a badass group of like bride of blood tears with a fucking like male consort that just echoes everyone just everything for you like they've got it mm-hmm. they've got they've done the right thing you know yeah and they also mean, like, like even val not dark s val is like yeah. i kind of want to yeah and she goes to sleep just in the tent and it's like oh okay cool cool they got some oils oh thank you for dealing with my sunburn i just i loved everything about it but i also just love dark s and i love her snark and i love her like oh you didn't shoot me in the head dumbass like i just i love everything about darkest so oh you're um, basically tanith yeah i am i am i am tanith because i think darkest is more it's like the dark sarcastic villains are my favorite so it was just like yes here we go snark coming oh, here we go yeah. but then also her landing on that battlefield in the middle of the war and everyone going oh hell and her just wrecking everyone it was just like yes Come on, wreck everyone. Wreck them. The, the way that he writes it as well is that even when she's killing people who are on quote unquote our side, he makes it so that you don't feel sorry for them. Mm. Like it's some idiot jumped up sorcerer who's got himself zapped mm. by the accelerator and he thinks he's invincible and he says something stupid to a, basically a walking god. And he's, he's, it's just like the cockiness and you're like, yeah, no, he deserved that. He's on our side, yeah. but he deserved that. Yeah. <laughs> he's not on my um, side, so. I found Stephanie really weird. She goes to Fletcher and goes, she can love you, but maybe I can. What what planet? What what <laughs> One, why would Fletcher choose you knowing that you're the reflection and then when it comes out that she's tried to murder Valkyrie and Fletcher like takes her somewhere to Australia and goes and you're not her I'm like oh okay where's the sass come from Fletcher and then oh, he takes it. it back I loved it yeah, I did not I don't know I haven't like and she did kill Carol yeah no, that's, that's, the, that's the thing that he finds out first he finds out first that she killed Carol. And that's the moment that he switches because uh, Skullduggery says something in front of him about, but you're not Valkyrie, blah, 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 blah. She's not a murderer. And that's when he's just like, what? And like, it's interesting because like, she's kissed him and it specifically says that he does not kiss her back. And then when she goes to kiss him again, that's when he like yeets her to Australia. Like, and it's just, the whole thing is really, really clever. And like, Considering what an asshole Fletcher was when we first met him, he is slowly becoming one of my favourite characters. Like he's such a cutie pie. And when like the the magic gets him, because Ravel's like, "Oh, your hair looks really good," or something like that. It had to be a phrase no one would use. I was like, "You leave his fucking hair alone, you piece of shit." I love that character arc for him though, because at first we all hated his guts. Yeah. And now it's like, yeah, come on! You're he's back. a super teenage boy. And now yeah. he's an adorable teenage boy. Yeah. It just Imperial really man. cracked me up. It really cracked me up how sassy he suddenly got. Like, you, how dare you stand her in, there in her clothes? Like, you know, you just got the vibe of you're not Valkyrie. No, you're not even, I'm not even good enough for, no, you're not good enough for me, rather than Valkyrie is too good for me. I also think it helps that they had kind of, like Val and Fletcher had kind of had a rekindling of the friendship at least, Mm. because they were friends first, Yeah, and so they've kind of been like, which is cute considering their age and the book age, we need to be adults about this. Yeah, we need to be emotionally mature. (laughs) Yeah, which is adorable, but also they do, and they are, and so they're just like, yeah, like, it's going to be awkward, but it's going to be awkward until we get over it, unless... Mm. Like, if we don't do yeah. anything, it will always be awkward. And we still are friends. We still get on. 
like we'll still help each other and then so that being in there as well with Stephanie having then murdered his friend his ex-girlfriend and now friend's cousin who he knows that Val had grown to like and yeah. who like cared for she treat them like like siblings like younger siblings and then trying to like take over um well not only that but he has seen how they acted towards him like they were really interested in him and like as much as he gives it the big and like he doesn't have high confidence at all so the fact mm. that they'd be like oh hey fletcher and like really happy to see him they would matter to him and that's why valkyrie has so much respect for him is because he has always treated her friends and family with respect and the fact that stephanie couldn't even do that when they're her family like that was unacceptable and i yeah, felt she's really wanting bad. to pretend to be valkyrie but she can't even do the basic level she's like i'm human you're not sure you're not at, the, at best you're some ai that has gone slightly awry and like it's it's interesting because she tries to sow discord anyway because she's just like skullduggery knew what he was doing he knew that the moment you pull me out of something that isn't my mirror it's over and like all that like, and i'm just like okay but even if he knew that was a risk or knew that, that was the case that doesn't mean you were definitely going to turn out to be a murderer like you did that your choices made that so Valkyrie comes home after being, you know, all this shit happening. Ghastly's dead. She's obviously, like, really, really fucking upset. And the first thing this human being does is try and kill her at this mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. When Valkyrie, okay, she left the reflection to, you know, take a lot of pain and a lot of shit, like, be, be killed multiple times or whatever. But she always comes back for the reflection, right? And it's always, that's what made Valkyrie, Valkyrie when she came back. And then this reflection decided, oh yeah, the most Valkyrie thing I can do, or the most Stephanie thing I can do, is to attack someone at their weakest moment. And like yeah. then she's like pretending like she's sad that Ghastly's dead because Ghastly was her friend. It's like no, 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 Ghastly was Valkyrie's friend, bitch, not yours. Yeah, <laughs> like it's really, Val, it's really even with Melancholia when she was trying to kill Val, but Lord Vile was there, and so she was like, right, no, we can sort our shit out in a moment. We need to get mm. both of us out alive. Priorities. Like, she, even when it's someone who, literally, they've hated each other from the instant that Val was in the necromancer circles. And then she's trying to kill her. And then she's like, no, no, I'm going to help you. I'm going to save you. She's, like, sacrificing herself multiple times, even though Melancholia isn't doing it back, to get both of them out of there. And then Stephanie thinks that, oh, yeah, attacking at their weakest moment is, is how best to be a real Stephanie. Mm. Did you learn nothing? You have all mm. of her memories. Yeah. It just proves that they are separate entities because even though they started basically in the same place, they've now evolved into these two completely divergent people with mm. such different, like, priorities. And I don't even know if it's just that they're different people. It's that one has empathy and one doesn't. And what's interesting is Derek Landy has found a way to play the same character three ways. Because you've got Darkest Valkyrie and Stephanie. And they are all three facets of the same person played very, very differently. Valkyrie feels guilty for every little fuck up, right? No matter how important it is. When she gets beaten by someone, like I can't remember, she's like fighting someone. And she's like, she's better than me. And Skullduggery's like, but you're the one standing here. Like, it's an obvious thing that she feels bad that she couldn't be better. Stephanie doesn't care, doesn't feel the guilt because as far as she feels, she's vindicated. And Dark S feels nothing. Like, there's nothing there. She's mildly irritated when people kill her, but then she just stitches herself back together. And that is as far as that goes and it's really interesting to see like the spectrum of that but going back to what we were saying about like Fletcher earlier being like a better person is his little speech about Ghastly and how I was like I don't think he actually liked me but he always took the time to listen to me was so wholesome so wholesome so I decided to add that, that adorable. I think that also but just quickly Ghastly entirely as well before it we go back to Fletcher and Ghastly with the uh, Valkyrie Dark S Stephanie it's also their levels of power. Stephanie is, it seems to correlate as in she's like, it doesn't matter what I do because I'm less powerful than everyone. And so therefore anything that I do that's bad is like, well, I was just trying to not be the least powerful. Even, mm. even though that's not the case, like in terms of how mm. Stephanie's thinking. And then Val is like, I should be more powerful than I am, but I need to use it with responsibility. 
And Dark S is like, I'm too powerful for this shit. I think one of the things I didn't like, that made me angry. I liked all of it, but the thing that made me angry was when Stephanie was like, what for Skullduggery, like, she's not Valkyrie. Like, it's not Valkyrie anymore. And it's like, mm-hmm. shut up. Skullduggery has got Valkyrie back. You've got, mm-hmm. you you know that Skullduggery has got stuff up his sleeves. Like, shut the fuck up. You know who this person is. He, he could have shot you in the head mm-hmm. multiple times by this point, and you would have deserved it. But he didn't, because he realised that Valkyrie would want you to stay with her family, because that's your purpose. That's what you were made yeah. for. Also, she's saying that when he's Lord Vile, he isn't him. And yeah. whilst he isn't, he also is. Like, he is he's still himself. in there. And so he, like, so she knows how Val feels when she is Dark S, because she has all of those memories. She yeah. also knows the discussions that she's had with Skullduggery. So she knows that both of them are still in there yeah. when they turn. And it's like, you, you're just digging yourself deeper. Yeah. Not down the shovel. Yeah. It's almost like she's pushing everybody's buttons and pushing to see how far she can go before someone kills her. And it's like, you want to live, apparently. Stop oh, pushing God. it, because there's a lot of people with guns there who are it's very she, angry and very tense. It's when she went to Gordon's house in Valkyrie's clothes with the Scepter of the Ancients and, like, didn't expect anyone to want to kill her. It was like, what are you doing? And then she goes to the sanctuary, fully aware that she can't do anything like she uses the scepter of the ancients and misses about six times and i'm like what the fuck are you doing just leave just you're not helping anyone just go just leave no one wants you there no one likes you like shoo but you were gonna say something before becca about um fletcher and uh ghastly because what i was saying is when he was saying that he didn't he doesn't think he ghastly liked him very much but he still made time for him i think that just perfectly sums up ghastly as a character in the sense that he may not like you or he may not completely agree with your actions, but he will still make time to listen to you. And even if he thinks you're an idiot, he'll still listen and possibly give advice, which I think sums him up so well. He was sort of like the grandfather of the group in that sense. In he was a good man. Mm. He was exactly. a good man. Mm. That's like the, the like you know how Americans are always like oh look up good man in the dictionary and you'll see this picture which I don't know what picture dictionaries they have but ghastly I don't know what picture dictionaries they're called illustrated Abby it's fine <laughs> also do they have illustrated dictionaries and if so why why not it's because a picture it is. is worth a thousand words really yeah. nothing. <laughs> this close to exiting the stream i mean it would get quieter but it wouldn't end so <laughs> <laughs> boom um going back to ghastly i'm just gonna i'm just gonna pretend that I'm no abby come back She's not um, anywhere, it's fine. i think i think with ghastly it's interesting <laughs> i don't like good characters Mm. generally i'm the person that will be cheering for the villain right because i find villains way more compelling but ghastly is one of the characters that breaks the mold for my kind of favorite characters and i think because ghastly is so down to earth and like he's the one you'd want to go and talk to and it's just like he was so good and then for Derek landy to just be like you can't have him anymore Mm. It's just like, okay, fine, just just shove your, your fist into my chest and pull my heart out. That's all fine. Mm-hmm. Good. <laughs> so. Mm, okay, let's find another thing to talk about that's slightly less. Oh, there we go. The perfect thing, because it's not as upsetting at all. So, um, obviously, we know that Scapegrace had a fun little body switch moment in the last book that we all forgot to discuss. But what I've put here is when he's talking to the guy who is teaching him uh, kung fu <laughs> which is my favorite thing he, um, he says i'm a man and the guy responds well nobody's perfect which is a some like it hot reference which is marilyn monroe <laughs> and i just i loved that it's a marilyn monroe film reference and it's so niche and i just really enjoyed it 
I didn't know the reference, but when Mr. No. Ping said we're in love, I lost it. I was I was cackling like a mad woman. I'm mm. honestly surprised Danny hadn't texted you, Hannah, and gone, is Lizzie okay? Because I was in here having all sorts of emotions, but Mr. Ping just made my life so much better. Grandmaster so Ping. Oh, Grand yes. Grandmaster Ping. Ping. <laughs> Mr. Ping. But it's just that he came in the fucking bar, like, um, bathrobe and he's yeah. like, Miss, Miss Scapegrace and myself were in love. And Skate Race is like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> when did this happen? I Guys, do wish. I'm sorry, carry on. At uni, I did Kung Fu with a Vietnamese Sifu. So I basically have my Sifu as Grandmaster Ping in my head. I'm like, I'm so Amazing. sorry, Sifu. Amazing. Oh, but I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. <laughs> Please forgive Like, me. I have utmost respect for my Sifu, genuinely. But, like... But also, it is more silly moments. I just have Grandmaster Ping and my seafood combined. I love that. Oh, what were you going to say, Lizzie? You just wish. The I just wish that Gabe Grace just accepted that he had this really sexy female body that everyone was in love with. Like, okay, it wasn't what you expected to happen, but like you, you could have had people at your feet. You could have China sorrows it, right? Like, exactly. Like you and I think. It's so interesting because there's like, I've been talking to Kieran about it because he at first was like, okay, is this transphobia? Because he's playing a character, being in a body that they don't think they should be in. And they're kind of, and I was like, but no one's scared of him, right? No one's scared that it's a man in a woman's body, which is how media usually portrays it. It's the more that he finds it really difficult to portray his personality trying to get past his own physiology and there is this really subtle moment where like he turns to thrasher and he's like how would you feel if you were stuck in the wrong body like how would you feel if you were stuck in the woman's like in a woman's body you don't understand how i feel and thrasher's like i kind of would understand though and it's this really subtle moment that actually yeah maybe thrasher is suffering from some kind of body dysmorphia or like where he feels trapped in the wrong body but also the fact that Scape Grace is such a fucking idiot that he's given this incredible like even Ghastly's like am I am I attracted I'm attracted to her this is awkward but I'm attracted to her him like I'm attracted to them like he could use that he could absolutely use that but he's not smart enough to do that which is why it's like I guess also that Thrasher is called the village idiot. <laughs> and I'm like, it should be the other way around. Yeah, for hey. sure. But also it kind of works in the dysphoria kind of thing where, yeah, like we're all sitting here being analytical. And like, I 100% agree with you. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm just being like devil's advocate kind of. But like, yeah, we're being analytical. You should use this. Of course you should. But also, can you imagine if it actually happened? Like, you wouldn't think of... Like, if I was suddenly put into the body of a very hot man, I wouldn't think of using that to my advantage. Because oh, I'd be like, why is there a penis? No, put, put me in Chris Hemsworth's body for a day and watch me rule the fucking world. <laughs> but also, watch me burn. <laughs> and you didn't know. Like, you didn't know you were going to wake up in a different gender's body. Like, like if someone work. said to me, you can be up- in so-and-so's body yeah sure you're expecting it it's just i'm trying that's what i meant by devil's africa it's like i kind of understand the fact that he's like, been in it, it for a while it's longer. not like it's been like he's woken up and now now, now what do i do because yes admittedly maybe for the first half an hour i'd be like well i don't want this i don't how do i deal with this right i've seen i've have you guys seen um it's a boy girl thing because there's literally okay, so basically it's like freaky. It's okay, yeah, cool, fair. Enough. Actually, that's the film that I'm going to commentate on because it's so funny. But it's basically Freaky Friday, but with a nerdy girl and a jock boy, and they swap bodies. And the first thing she has to deal with is his morning glory, and she's just like, "I don't want to touch it. I don't want to touch it." And she like sit. There's a scene where she's literally sitting, and she's just like. I don't, I don't know what to do. Like, it's so funny. It's so funny. See, that's just it wasn't like, like, deal with that at all because he's just like naked. Nice. <laughs> that's sort of like in um, Guns of Kimbo, but not really. It's. Have you ever seen that one? Is that the one with um, Dan Radcliffe? Dan Radcliffe, yeah. yeah. And he's he gets two guns bolted to his hands, and he's got to try and deal with going to the loo. And it's sort of like how he's trying to like. That's kind of what I wanted. 
in that, like, what do I do with all of this now? Oh, right, like, yeah. I was going to say, I'm like, I'm sorry, you want Scapegrace to have guns bolted to his hands? What? No. So I don't think he could have covered it, but I think it would have been so interesting if he'd had, if he'd covered, like, periods. Mm. Oh. Like, man, imagine man. a man getting a period. Well, he kind of alludes to it, doesn't he? Because he says, like, oh, everything's starting, like, to work again. And I got that as, oh, mm -hmm. that's how I, that's how I interpreted it as well. Because I'm like, like, well, I mean, like, bladder stuff, okay. But, like, it's specifically female body. And I was like, oh, okay, we, we, we I can read mm -hmm. the subject. I, I just kind of wanted him, because he's not going to have the same, like, thing that we're brought up with as people who are raised as female which is like oh you you like around like the other gender and in polite society you don't mention oh i'm cramping really bad my period's really high and like obviously we're kind of fucking that oh, off oh we're not anyway. supposed to do that is are we not i said we're fucking it off at the moment anyway okay cool no, that's fine because i tell everyone i'm like no no yes <laughs> i do the same thing but like again when this was published as well mm. and also like he's not going to have experienced that because polite society did da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. i wanted him just whining at thrasher just being like gerald i'm cramping leave me alone i want one scene one scene where scapegrace is wearing just a giant like snood type blanket has a hot water bottle and a tub of ben and jerry's and then just goes just bring me another blanket like i just want that scene i just think it would be, and fashion would do it right fashion would be like would you like i can install the chocolate fountain again yes install the chocolate fountain again <laughs> that would have been amazing if that's how skullduggery and the rest of them found them in the basement of the pub yeah and like they'd all be like what the <laughs> and then val being the only kind of woman in the group immediately would have that weird that she has at other points with scrape race in his new her their new body it's fine. is i don't know i don't know what their preferred product Whatever. um would have the moment of oh shit yeah that's not fun chocolate van that's a good mm. idea and she would have that weird moment of like why am i siding with you mm. but the other thing I wanted to see was Skate Race figuring out how to put on a bra because obviously that's something we're all used to and then him being like how do you put this on <laughs> The thing is, like, he's not even suave enough to be like, it's fine, I know how to take one off, maybe I can just reverse engineer that. He's like, I don't know what this is. But also, Val's still decently young, that she's going to be closer than we are to remembering when you first learn how to put on a bra, because it isn't easy. <laughs> like, it takes, a, like, men are like, oh, you just, mm, and you know how to, no. Have you, you seen, put one like, on you them, haven't mate. seen you the pee locker room them. when we're 13 years old being like <laughs> and everything and hurts just as well and it's like everything's tender and you're just like i don't know what i'm doing yeah no absolutely absolutely like i said there needed to be more scenes like that which may have seemed inauthentic because it's a man writing those scenes i think maybe if it had like a female co-writer those scenes would have been more authentic but i missed them and maybe i will do my own little scapegrace adventures because like fair enough yes train him to be batman fine i get that but like i want to see those scenes well the thing is he's got when he Derek landy I, I follow him on like twitter and instagram and stuff and there is a woman in his life that he's pretty close with i don't know if it's a partner or a family member like he doesn't mention the type of relationship it is at all um, just that he does stuff online with her so it could be his partner and it's like you could use her she could like you could write it and then she could go fuck off yes mm -hmm. fuck off yes but do you really think this happens who told you this who hurt you but that's true yeah for sure <laughs> literally, literally or, like or just go into the men right twitter account uh, men right women twitter account and then do the opposite <laughs> yeah 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 that's how to do it as well. For sure. But he could have also just been slightly too grossed out to even go there because we all know men are wimp when it comes to this. True, but not. I think it depends. Cool. I think men yeah. that haven't grown up with women do. It's really funny to me because, like, I've got two brothers and one of them is definitely more squeamish than the other. But the one that hangs out with me is the one that's not squeamish. And, like, I remember him being like, a girlfriend had texted him being like, oh, don't come around today. 
uh, I'm like on my lady days and I'm just horrible to be around. And he's like, but we were going to go to the cinema. If you can't do that, then I'll bring the cinema to you. And she's like, no, because like I've broken out and my hair's greasy. And he's like, I have an older sister who doesn't understand boundaries. Fear not. <laughs> like, it's just that you're like, no, like you need to know this. Whereas my other brother has always been very like independent and yes he's with his missus and yes he's aware of all those things but that's because of who he is as opposed to because I've had any influence on him growing up whatsoever so I think I I said this to my mum the other day because she was we were joking that I'm way too picky about the, the guys that I date and she was like well what's one of the things that for you is a massive red flag and I was like I won't date a guy that doesn't have sisters because I, there is such a massive difference between a guy, fair enough if he's an only child, but if a guy has only grown up in a male like in, institution, whether it's he went to an all-boys school or he only has brothers or whatever, or like he goes golfing with his dad every weekend, those to me are always a bit sus. Because I'm like, the, you're almost overtly trying to like fill out your masculine quota. Do you know what I mean? Whereas a guy who has sisters or at least hangs out with other women. I just feel like they they're a bit more empathetic. They can pick up on those cues. And like there's my no TikTok partner, trend at the moment. Go on. My my partner's got a brother, his dad, and his mum, but hates his dad, hates his brother, spends the most time with his mum, and loads of his friends are female. Like okay. it's probably about 50-50. And so you were like, yeah, people who don't have like sisters. And I was like, Chris. But and then like I thought more and more and I was like no this is it's <laughs> the thing is like it's one of these things where like just because that's not it for me doesn't mean it's not probably it for someone else because no, someone else I will want someone like someone else will be like oh I can't stand people that hang out with their sister like that's weird like I remember one of the partners I had I was he was like with you, you I just meant he fit in yeah no congrats <laughs> I approve <laughs> on that relationship that you've been in way longer than I've known you well done um I can't remember where I was going with this. But yeah, essentially, it's like for me, there'll be those things where just by being in an environment with other women, it makes it easier. And I think that's the thing is like Valkyrie feels like an authentic teenage girl, right? Like even though she, we don't talk about those things that she will have to deal with as she's pubescent or whatever, it's because it's not relevant to the story. She's learning to be a detective. She's learning to be a badass. And yes, you know, there, there are moments when she's like in the shower and she feels really vulnerable. And that feels authentic because that has nothing to do with her gender. Like as a kid going through those things, she would feel vulnerable no matter what. So I think that is really authentic. I just think it would be interesting to see how Derek Landy takes something that is inherently, when it comes to biology, that thing. Especially because it's been taboo for so long. Like I remember people were telling me that I sh with Throne of Glass, it's one of the first fantasy series they ever heard where it mentions periods in it. And I was like, well, I know I've, I've read it in other books. And then I was like, no, I haven't. I haven't. I've read it in like certain contemporaries, but like a lot of the high fantasies that I had read up until maybe like a couple of years ago were written by men and the main characters were men. And if they came across women, those women didn't really mention it. Go on. That series has periods in I didn't even know that was a series. Bitch. <laughs> Bitch. It's my favorite series, hence the mm. channel name. It's the Panel okay. series by Alison Crogan. It's a high fantasy YA series that I read first when I was about 13. And it's like the books that I reread and reread and reread. And mm. like, it's written by a woman. So that's probably why, but it's a fantasy series that is pretty heavy on the periods. Like she, um, not a spoiler, the girl starts off as a slave, so malnourished that at 16 she hasn't started a period. And then she's then becomes nourished and eats, and then so she starts a period. And there's this whole thing, they actually have a tiny bit of a spoiler, it doesn't spoil the plot, but it spoils a fun point. But um, like her mentor is a bloke, and he sees her. And she's like pale and she's like not feeling well and she, she's bleeding. He runs to go find the woman of the house that they're staying at. Pale, pale, this is a mature man who's supposed to be like well renowned, pale as a sheet. You must come fast to my rat. And they leg it. And then Sylvie's just like, she's just on her caravan, dude. <laughs> <laughs> You're so fast, period, she's fine. She'll be all right, she'll make and it. And then 
yeah this and then they have like a whole discussion Russia. around it and how that kind of like she it like she's coming into her adulthood and then she myrad having been a slave is like but this is a curse i've i've always been told that this is a curse because obviously the women who get that then if they're then raped by the men in this slave cottage then mm-hmm. become pregnant and so and then also you obviously have the weakness and it makes doing your slave chores harder and so it was like this whole discussion Sorry, of like no, slave no. chores Shut feels up. like an oxymoron yes uh and then so they have like this whole discussion about it and then it's continued on all of the books like she'll be on her period and she'll just be like oh yeah Kadban, we need to like stop at the next inn because i need to change my clothes like mm-hmm. it's woven in really well and this came out before throwing it past so just nice to put it back on to skullduggery though this <laughs> should have been this this should have been that scene with thrasher where thrasher like finds out that he's on and then goes what and panics and this should have been a scene of him running out of a shop with like loads of chocolate and pads of malt. No, Thrasher, Thrasher, as much as he is a village idiot, strikes me as the kind of person where one has grown up around women. Like he gives me vibes of like my mum, my aunt, and my sister really mad, like took care of me, which is why I can't do anything for myself. And also, I think it'd be better if he just got on with it. Yeah, yeah, like, like he just appear with with a pack of pads. Or for me, oh yeah. Like, he'd have, have like, all different things. But like, which one would you want? I he'd have the little like... basket. The little basket that has the three different sizes and tampons. And then Skateboard and... would be like, what even is this? And Thrasher's like, well, this one's this, and you do this with it. And, like, and he could even... I've got hair in my mouth. He could even, like, avoid being too explicit for a middle grade kid series by just having, like, Val walk in as Thrasher is explaining what they all do. Mm. The and, like, which one you want mean? to use. That would be it would be adorable. Easy. How do I know which one to use? It's personal choice, sir. You pick the one that you're comfortable with. Sorry, you, you saying how do I know which one to use made me think of a TikTok where it's a guy on the phone to his girlfriend and he's like, how do I know which one to get? And she's just like, is it like the size of her panani? Well, like, what is it? And it's like, no, it's not that. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, boys are stupid. But I feel like Thrasher would have a calendar somewhere that Skate Grace is never going to go um, that like ticks off the day. So he's like counting 28 days and he's like, oh shit, it's tomorrow. <laughs> and like goes out and bulk buys everything. Or track, like, like, like the symptoms of going, well, they're moodier mm-hmm. today and they're hungrier mm-hmm. than usual. Oh, like, are okay. you ovulating? <laughs> yeah. Um, I did want to say it would be really yeah. blunt and really scientific. Mm. <laughs> I just want to say about you said about Valkyrie feeling very um what did you say? Valkyrie being very like realistic I, for a teenager. Realistic. Girl. That's that's the one. My brain decided to go, nope. Um <laughs> can we just talk about her thirstiness towards Dexter Vex? Because like same. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> so that was something else that Kieran texted me like when he got that moment because it was so funny just like can you please put a shirt on your distracting valkyrie <laughs> fucking killed me it was no, so funny the first bit was when they were going down the slide and she was like <laughs> yeah yeah like, we all would we all would like it's so yeah, like, funny like, it's yeah, so funny I mean, same like he is he's described as being super sexy but like it's hilarious just how much valkyrie's like mm. Wow. It's just, it's just mad. the fact that Skullduggery, he's not even mad about it. He's just like, can you put your shirt on? You're distracting her. Let's get on with the job. <laughs> like, it's so how the embarrassed whole thing is so funny. is. Like, how embarrassed Valkyrie is. Like, no, I'm not. It's not I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. And it's like, oh, we've all been there, though, where someone's gone to mm-hmm. fancy him. <laughs> Or like you get caught out in it when you're like, oh, I've literally been staring at this person like an absolute psycho. Because I think it's like she like she makes a noise. She like just agrees with him. And everyone's just like, sorry, did you have something you wanted to say? And she's just like, what? <laughs> no. Like, and it's that moment where like you're so dumbstruck. You don't even have a good lie. Like, it's so funny. I loved that. I loved that. I just needed to bring it up because it was one of my favourite moments. Just about creeping thirsty over text. It's not like that. No, that was great. That was great. Also, can we talk about the monster hunters? Because they were just great. Oh. I love See, them. Have you, have I want guys... the picture book. I want the picture book. I need it. I need it in my life. Like, Derek Landy, why is that not a book yet? Like, for fuck's sake, give it to me. Because that would be so good. And mm. it'd be like illustrations by Fletcher Rand who can't draw. <laughs> 
<laughs> drawn by Derek Landy himself as yeah. well. Authenticity. Yeah. Here well, he said it. that he may do more spin-offs in the future, so Good. maybe we should just start spamming his Twitter account. Like, please, like this, 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 this. Come on, do it. I just want that. I don't. I don't. I'm like, okay. If one thing out of Skull Dogger Present, please give me the Monster Hunter books illustrated by Fletcher Wren. Like, please. Yeah, I love that. Uh, they give me the same vibes as Ghost Faces from Supernatural. Yeah. <laughs> They are the ghost faces in time. Abby doesn't get that reference, but everyone else got that reference. That's Actually, fine. Actually, the mortals, Kenny and the other guy, gave yeah. me that as well when they're yes. doing the whole documentary. When they're like, I'm going to get myself killed any minute, but I'm going to go in. Oh, and when he at the end, he's like, Oh, and that guy, he has a family. The least I can do is go and like that dramatic ending of him going to speak to the parents about how she died protecting like war that, that fuck. was my that was my second heart attack gasp moment of <gasps> no mm -hmm. literally i just went not this bit no yeah, yeah. end on this bit because i'm gonna wait yeah dramatic i remember that happening and i was like oh no here we go I like, mm -hmm. all he sees is her disappear like in fairness he doesn't know anything really about how any of this works and he just sees her yeet out of existence and it looks like she's just been exploded like yeah. i get where she cut where he comes from but also it's like why are you going to go tell the family though you know skull very presence are alive like why why haven't you gone to speak to him you know yeah it's gonna be really funny though when he like goes to speak and then stephanie just like comes out of the corridor just like who's this what that's gonna be great uh speaking of stephanie uh, the next thing that i've written on my list is the fact that she makes a shylock reference for any like shakespeare nerds there where she does her whole speech of like you know if you cut me do i not bleed do i not laugh and you joke whatever um which i think is really interesting for shakespeare nerds is that shylock loses <laughs> he doesn't win that argument as a great argument as that is and as valid as those points are he does not win in that play so for me that is definite foreshadowing <laughs> I think it's interesting though because then she doesn't win with Fletcher. Like he's still like, nah. Like I don't give a shit. Like you may be a hum like you may see yourself as a human, but you're still not her. Like mm -hmm. she still doesn't win. Like her argument is still null and yeah. void. Yeah, and like That's basically, I mean. like no one treats her with anything but basic respect, and even then, it is skin thin. Yeah, I think it's anything. I do think it's funny. I can't remember what it was. I can't remember. Who, I can't remember who it was. But when someone goes to speak to Stephanie and she's like, "They're not going to listen to me," and they're like, "Oh, yes, they will," and it's like that is a Valkyrie, and she's like, "No, they're not going to listen to me. Like, I don't. I don't want to listen." And they're like so adamant, like, "Yes, they will." It's like, no, they no, they won't, because they don't like you. You're there for convenience because you have a scepter, and we need that right now to you know kill the warlock dude, but. Other yeah. than that, you're not, you're not useful. Dude. And she still was fucking useless, let's be honest. Like, she yeah. just got in the way. And she, the amount of time she got saved, and I'm like, nah, just let her die. She'd learn a lesson then, wouldn't she? She'd learn a lesson then! <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do feel like if anything is going to teach me a lesson, it will be ceasing to exist. She's already done that. It didn't teach her anything. Yeah, but this time she can't come back. Worse. But she can't come back. But she also, if they kill her... She did smash yeah. the mirror, that's true. She smashed her own mirror. How is she going to get back? She can't get back because the puddle's yeah. fucking gone. The puddle's a puddle. The puddle's a puddle. <laughs> but the thing is as well, it's, all they had to do was kill her, then grab the scepter, then they had the scepter. Yeah. But they, they don't then have the moral issue. Good point. It's Scott Dark because there's a lot of things in that world that aren't, that aren't human and that they still give respect to on a certain level. It's still murder. And so, like, as long as you have a conscience and, like, you're able to communicate in, like, some clear manner, it's murder. I would say it give it to be China because she wouldn't care, but she wasn't around for that bit. <laughs> no, but she is next on my list if we want to move on. So China coming to power as Grand Mage after the others were killed um, and after Dark Ass saved her, kind of ruining her moment. <laughs> oh, I was like, finally, China gets her due. Like, I <laughs> love China so much because she is so self-aware about how horrible she is right she she knows who she is and yeah. she runs with it and the whole scene where she was like okay well i'm gonna die so i'm gonna boil myself alive and like that's cool like i'm i'm fine with that i'm gonna take madame miss down and then when she's so pissed off because dark is like no absolutely not and so trying to sound like oh 
it's just the fact that from China's perspective, it's like, and then Darkess arrived, really like spoiling the mood. <laughs> like it was just like, <sighs> and then like she was going to destroy Darkess, and then was like, but I can't because Valkyrie's in there. And then it's like the idea that there's that kindred spirit where they both have the same moment of like, no, I can't let you die. You're not ready to die yet. This isn't happening. I found really interesting. But I was just like, oh, China, what you like? At the same time, it was so interesting to see as well just how much power she's got in her because we've had all of these little bits of seeing like what she's done to herself and what powers can come out of her. But then to see just how powerful nuclear she can go as well, it was like, mm. Jesus, China, what were you thinking when you first came up with that? But, but the they're not just empty threats when she threatens people. No. Like, yeah. to, this far, we had no idea whether they were just empty threats or whether she just hired other people. But no, every single threat she's given out, she can fucking act on. And the chase scene on horseback, and she gives the horse fucking wings, I was like, yes, more of that, please. You're riding on a horse who just sprouted wings and kept on galloping. I'm like, yes, please, I want one. Thanks, where can I get one where I where I can make my horse have wings? Thanks. <laughs> and then she runs it's the entire- fact that She only uses it for practicality. Mm -hmm. Like China, you've made a Pegasus. Yep. The is, any, is just practical on every level. Just yeah. Like, she doesn't do anything unless it is practical or will further her, like... It's when she goes to, like, heal herself, right? And then gets really pissed off because then she gets beaten up because she doesn't have enough time. And she's like, oh, I'll just heal myself, use that to do well. Ugh. And then she runs, and she's like, she runs into Ghastly in the in the sanctuary. It's like, I've been running for a long time. <laughs> I needed someone to heal myself. I loved it. I like China. Yeah. So. so glad oh. she's out in charge. Like, well, it's interesting because she she was in charge in the other world as well. So it's the fact that it's kind of like come full circle on that as well. I'm waiting to see when Skullduggery regrets giving China the, the role. I'm, I'm waiting for the drop to happen, because it will happen by trying to be like, well, I'm Grand Mage, so shut up. <laughs> I don't know if that will happen, purely because of the relationship that they have brewing between the two of them. And, like, he's had the opportunity to kill her for betraying him and his family so many times and every time everyone's like this is it this is going to be the moment where skullduggery kills china and then china's like oh you got here finally then because like the whole time that she's like in behind enemy lines or whatever and he knows he knows she's there and he knows that she's gonna like have all this info for them when they finally get to her and like i thought you weren't gonna save me and all this sort of stuff but it's just like nah they're they're besties they're besties on the sly <laughs> I'd say they're more like frenemies. So it's a yeah. lot of friends, but we've done some stuff to each other. But like, it's the mutual respect, then, isn't it? It's like mm. we've both fucked up and we've both fucked each other over, and chances are we'll do it again. And also, she's one of the only people, like, who I think would also accept him as Lord Vile mm. in that sort of, yeah, we've both done horrendous things and made many mistakes over the years. We'll just. Yeah. We both um, have a body count, you know? <laughs> I cannot wait for Dark S to bring out Lord Vile. Like, I'm 100% convinced Dark S is going to bring Lord Vile out at a real inopportune moment, and then the drop will happen where everyone realises that Skullduggery and Lord Vile are the same. And I'm so excited for that to happen. Can yeah. we just appreciate the fact, though, that Ghastly never found out? Because, obviously, Lord Vile killed Ghastly's mother. And it's like, if he had found that out, it would have broken his heart. So at least he never found that out. Yay! Yay! That's yeah. small mercies. Mm. I don't know if that is a mercy. At least he didn't ruin his friendship with Skullduggery. Mm -hmm. oh, see, when everyone found out that Valkyrie and Darkass were the same person, right? And everyone was really mad at Skullduggery for keeping a secret, right? But... At the same time, it wasn't Skullduggery's secret. And I think the fact that everyone was so angry at him, like, the fact that he never once said, but it wasn't my secret, I'm like, you should have used that line. Because no, he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't need to defend anything that he did. 
Oh, yeah, true. He is called Dugarius and he can get away with anything. That's kind of the point. Well, no, it? not just that, but, like, if it's not his secret to tell, then this isn't his problem to deal with either. Like, you're mad at him for not telling you something that, one, you had no right to that information from him. So you can't be mad at him for not giving you that information. You got it when you needed it, which is now, as the world is crumbling. <laughs> Sort of like that moment in Star Trek where Spock gives the, um, like, tells them that the Doctor's actually the um, daughter of the thing, and it, Kirk goes, so when were you going to tell us this? When it became relevant. And it just did. <laughs> just like, that sort of... I ain't is, telling you is that. that one of the films or the TV series? That's Star Trek Into Darkness. That's oh, I, I have seen that. I have seen that. Yeah. I just don't, I don't... Is she the blonde? Yes. Yeah, okay, no, okay, yeah, yeah, cool. I'm here, I'm with you. For a second then, I was like, you know, like Abby. <laughs> what <a> Star Trek? <laughs> it's so good. It's all right. Next, next Gen was such a comfort show during lockdown last year. It was just nice and comforting. Speaking of next, next question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to get it back on track again. Uh, no, I've run out. That's my list. So what have you guys felt that was not mentioned that you want to mention? I'm trying to think now. Or should we just discuss... Uh... I have one thing. Go on. Where um, before they go to Bride of Blood Tears and everyone was telling Garth that she's going to get sunburned and needs to take some sun cream. And she takes one tube of sun, sun cream and then doesn't put it on before she gets there and then is so shocked that she gets a tube of sunburn. I'm like... With that Irish complexion? <laughs> She's Irish, remember? But the thing is, as well, is that that is just classic skullduggery team in the sense that nobody has the brain cell. Like we've said before, China owns it in a locked box mm. and no one's allowed mm. to even look at it in case it explodes. It just, it was just that moment of, you were warned, mm. and then after you've been sunburnt, you put the sun cream on. Yeah. I have not no how it doing works. That. Not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we did that at 16, so, and to be fair. At least, like I said, at least it's realistic. Yeah. Yeah, but then she gets it, then she gets it fixed by the, by the, the slave dude. Well, they're not That's slave dude. Because the he was not dude. Yeah. <laughs> It's just after sun. Well, no, because she suddenly gets to tan within five minutes. I'm like, if that's how after sun worked, just slather me every time I'm in the sunlight. Slather me. <laughs> We're broken, Hannah. It was amazing. Just slather me. <laughs> Dexter Vex can slather me any time. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I sounded like my nan then when I did that. <laughs> oh. No, see. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Moving swiftly. Right. Let's. So, the book. So, I don't have it. It is in, Newca in Newcastle. No, I'm in Newcastle. It's in York. So, I preemptively prepared and got the cover up on my phone. I love that. As a substitute. So, I like that we've got. I love that she's dressed as like in the red as well. So, she's still like the red blood princess ladies Tanith being a badass Stephanie being a cow mm. is it because she's got something coming out of her fist that's not the scepter she could be wearing some sort of magic gauntlet no she isn't that's just electricity coming out of her mm. fist mm. maybe it's interesting Val yeah possibly um, and then Obviously, China looking sexy in the corner, uh, and then <laughs> Man of sang the sanguine in the middle. Just really enjoy that. Um, okay, so my back back page says mine's just a head. Mine's just, just a head. head. We love that. Um, so, following the loss of Valkyrie Kane, Skullduggery Pleasant must track down Dark S before she turns the whole world into a charred, lifeless cinder. And so he draws together a team of soldiers, monster hunters, criminals, and Valkyrie's now murderous reflection. Not everyone will get out of this alive. At least the mon oh. monster hunters are coming back. <laughs> Mine's a little longer. So mm. I, I prepared. Mine's a little longer. I went and found 
the one that would have been online. So, as usual, it's got some of the same bits. So, Valkyrie, Dark S, Stephanie. The world ain't big enough for the three of them. The end will come. The War of the Sanctuaries has been won, but it wasn't without its casualties. Following the loss of Valkyrie Kane, Skullduggery Pleasant must use any and all means to track down and stop Dark S before she turns the world into a charred, lifeless cinder. And so he draws together a team of soldiers, monster hunters, killers, criminals, and Valkyrie's own murderous reflection. The war may be over, but the final battle is about to begin, and not everyone gets out of here alive. Mm, interesting. I'm not going to hypothesise about what I think is going to happen, because I will mix in a bit of a spoiler, and I don't want to do that. So really, it's just down to kind of Becca and Lizzie. <laughs> I'm not hyped for more Stephanie. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone hyped for more Stephanie? No. Stephanie. No. no, not even Stephanie. Stephanie just wants to live her life. I'm just not. I just don't want to hear from her anymore. Like, you can exist. I just don't want to hear about it. Um, if anyone else dies, I'm not sure how I'm gonna feel. Feel like if Dexter Vex dies, I might, I might revolt. I might just put the books down. I'm kidding. I am kidding. Obviously, I'm joking. Um, I, I think speak like I think actually, if you're not like if you don't want someone to die, I think we should create a bingo board and have the different <laughs> things in it that we think is gonna happen. That could be fun. I have the only problem I is. The only person who can make the bingo board without any outside influence from the series is Lily. But that's what I'm saying, is we can do we can do the board um, and make several of them. Because really, we just need 16 prompts and then to put them in different places. So, like, who hits bingo first, right? And if Lizzie and Becca come up with the prompts and you and I don't say but anything... Becca has read it I, before so she'll have, so, it. like even though she doesn't know what happens she's got residual so if you're like okay. oh what's gonna I happen remember one thing from this book there's one but also thing. if someone said oh what's gonna happen with this you're more likely to guess like a correct plot point yeah just because it's in your head somewhere vaguely like, out, yeah. out, out of context from only from the book titles because i don't read any of the um blurbs or whatever the only time i hear the blurb is when you you two do your blurbs i don't look otherwise out of book titles i have a feeling that someone very important is going to die interesting do you want to speculate I, as to who you think that is going to be i think skullduggery is going to die and be obliterated only because obliterated. only because well that's the only way i, I feel like he's going to die if he can't put himself you know back into Anyway, I feel like he's gonna die, and then because because there's a book called Resurrection, that's the only that's the only reason that I've got that in my head. I could be completely incorrect, but I have a feeling. Okay, do you want to put that on the bingo board? Why not? <laughs> not only do I have this face, but in my head, I currently have pa -pa -pa poker face. Pa -pa <laughs> See, I hear I've got a feeling, and my brain goes, it could be bunnies because of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Bunnies but aren't it, as cute like everyone supposes, okay? They've got them floppy legs and twitchy little noses. Yeah. And what's with all those carrots? What do they need such good eyesight for anyway? <laughs> bunnies? Bunnies, it must be bunnies. <laughs> yes! Or maybe, and then she uses an offensive word for short people. Anyway, what else do we think might happen? Um, I'm going to put the Stephanie gets a punch in the face or some oh, kind please. of, because I just love to see it. So Stephanie gets a smack. <laughs> I think um, Stephanie will use the scepter on, on Dark S and it won't work. Is this just for the next book? Yeah. Okay. Oh, interesting. Why did you ask that? And no, I'm joking. Because <laughs> I was going, if it was for the rest of the series, to try and subtly bring it back to that thing that you said to see if we could get it on the board. Oh, what? Um, I don't, you, you, think, you think I'm going to remember something I said last month? I have a brain like a sim. <laughs> exactly. Which is why subtly. Subtly. You're getting very Welsh. Like if, if it's about uh, Alice being evil, then I still want that to happen. Right. Should we add that to the list? 
That could be number four. Alice is evil. Um, I'm going to say Tannis gets healed from the remnant, as in it's completely taken out of her. Okay. Because I keep on wanting it to happen, but I can't remember. It's driving me nuts. <laughs> it, would be, it would be such a dick move if she did get healed after she can't get together with Ghastly. Yes, but that's what Derek Landy does. I know. He goes, it's a nice thing. You can't have it. You can't have it. Um, oh, shit. I'm just throwing my pen at myself now. Um, what about Fletcher? What's Fletcher going to go up to? A happy ending. Okay, that's not my one. <laughs> it's hopeful. Well, he Fletcher is going to... He's going to fall in love with someone who's going to try and kill him again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's go with Fletcher. Relationship decision. <laughs> yeah, let's keep it vague. Fletcher makes a terrible relationship choice. <laughs> Which is that would be the alternative title of this series if you change perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, let's, let's give ourselves an easy point. Let's put Skullduggery as sarcastic. <laughs> Shall Ooh. we also put in the sparrows to fly south for the winter? Yes. Yes. Um, I genuinely I... don't know if they say it, but they might do. That went proper Welsh again, then. That was a stupid voice. That's not my actual voice. My yeah, but the Welsh do kind of sound stupid, don't they? Malcolm <laughs> Edgley is going to have um, magic. Malcolm. No, Malcolm Edgley, we already know that he's got magic. He, Not Malcolm, her dad. I don't remember. Oh, um, what's her dad's name? No, that is... That's Malcolm. Malcolm. Who am I thinking of, then? Her uncle. Her uncle, Names. Her uncle does, but I don't know his name. Fergus. 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 See, I thought Fergus was the dad's name, but I couldn't quite... Okay, Malcolm has magic. Okay. Her I honestly... prediction of they have to go down into the death pits of magic beneath the house. Because they're all white. Death gets bigger. Gordon. So Gordon the sanctuary gets bigger because obviously it's already. All right. <laughs> My brain is going in all other directions now. You're asking me to hypothesize what's going to happen. Uh, Gordon is mm -hmm. going to be the soul that is sacrificed from this. That's how they're going to make the decision. Is that Gordon is going to be like, I'll do it. Even though he's a memory of soul, but they'll yeah. try it anyway. Sacrifice. I'm loving Abby's complete poker face. <laughs> I do too. It's quite fun. It's just completely blank. You look if like I get you're any of To be fair, if I get any of these right, I'll be very proud of myself because it hardly ever happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I want to make a list now because previously we've like discussed it. And then we've not actually come back to see whether only those things have actually come true. So that's why I thought if we made a bingo board with them, it would be really entertaining to like see. Once we finish the bingo board, I'm aware I'm not participating, but I can't. Um, I think it would be really interesting if you guys did like predictions. Okay, if you guys did predictions for it was Kev mentioning once again that I have sweet foods available for me. Nice. Uh, not lemon meringue pie, sadly. Um, but yeah, if you guys give your predictions for the series, again, I can't help. Oh, and obviously no, I'm just going to sit here and put places. But just like, oh, I think like Lizzie before kind of hinted at that, saying that she thinks in the next book that Skullduggery is going to die and that in the one after, which is called Resurrection, that he's going to come back to life. That's kind of a further on in the series prediction. I want more of them. That would be really See, fun. See, I so, like, don't want to participate in that because, again thanks to pinterest massive spoilers don't know when it's going to come up in the series but i know something in particular happens so message me i want to know what you know i dodge spoilers like nobody's just like why no I honestly i made the stupidest mistake last year of following a skullduggery pleasant instagram account you said mm -hmm. and then they gave a massive spoiler about valkyrie and i was like Right. Oh, to be fair, you told me this before. On the massive spoiler, it was a slide across one, and it said, yeah. "Don't swipe if you don't want the spoiler." And she swiped. Uh, I sometimes do that because it didn't say which specific book it was spoiling. 
So to be fair, I, oh. <laughs> I, don't, I don't look at anything related to anything I'm reading. So I avoid everything Skullduggery Pleasant apart from when I'm on these like live shows. Because I don't want to know. I love books that keep me guessing. And I hate it if someone ruins it for me. I hate it. I don't it. mind. I don't so mind. Don't got a good perfect face. Like, I don't mind looking up some spoilers. It depends on what it is. Because I have, like, looked up some things for, like, when I'm watching a TV show. I've done, look, I just need to know if that person lives or something. And I've looked that up. Or Twitter has spoiled Grey's Anatomy for me four or five times now. And stuff like this. But other things I'm like, do not give me any spoiler whatsoever. And this is one of those series. One time I've done that is for S.H.I.E.L.D., Agent Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., for one particular relationship, and I had to know, okay? And that was the only time I've ever, ever looked it I, up. I ever. still haven't seen the final seventh series yet. I still haven't finished it all, but I made sure that the my headcanon was still a thing. Don't worry. Oh, no. I was on Twitter the day after it aired looking at all the spoilers. I did the exact same thing with Supernatural. I was like, I just want to know I'm behind. I don't care anymore. And then texted my best friend my disgust. <laughs> it was quite fun. I still don't know how Supernatural ends, so I'm quite happy about Horribly. that. Horribly. Um, I'm sure it will, because any long-running series ends terribly. That's just how it goes. Yeah. So don't watch the final series. Make up your own head canon. Go from there because it'll be far better than it what actually ended. I, we're talking about Thrones now, are we? No. <laughs> Supernatural. Lucy. Also, Matt Smith being in the new HBO Dragon series. I'm like, what the fuck is the Doctor doing in is as a Targaryen? What's happening? What's happening? Can we talk about how that trailer dropped? And they had such a low viewing of it that they're considering reshooting things already. Because people were so disappointed with that final series. And that series came out long enough ago that people don't give a shit and did not engage with that trailer at all. I'm looking forward to it because I like the Targaryens. And then I saw Matt Smith and I was like, I need to see this. This is is me anytime someone who has ever been the Doctor is cast in anything. I'm like, why is the Doctor... Broadchurch. I'm sorry, why is Doctor Who floating around? Yeah, but I don't see David Tennant as the Doctor in Good Omens, though. I'm like, that's crowded. I've not seen that yet. But Eccleston in Trek, I think. Eccleston's not in Trek. Yes, he is. Why is he in Trek? In one of the movies. He's not in one of the movies. The only thing we've seen Eccleston in is um, Thor, the Thor... Thor the Dark World. Dark World. Yeah, he's in okay. Thor Dark World. Krista Eccleston, none, like, none of the Doctors, as far as I can remember, have ever been in a Star Trek movie. Oh, maybe I do mean Thor then. Well, regardless. Yeah. When he's in something else. <laughs> maybe I mean Thor. But when he's in anything else, and he's there trying to be all serious, I just I just see an angry northerner hmm. in a leather jacket. Hmm. See, I then just take that as prime opportunity to then start making jokes. Because there's so many Doctor Who jokes throughout Good Omens that I was going, wee every five minutes. Sorry, what noise do you make? Wee <laughs> I do That's going to go in the compilation. Yay! You know it. Yay! Um, also, we need five more things that we think are going to come up in the things so I can make. This. And as much as Abby has said that she can't participate in the bingo board, the whole point of a bingo board is it has the same numbers slash prompts, but in different orders. Uh, Dexter, Lex, and Valkyrie are going to hook up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, it will be like it will be. It will be mentioned that, and then like Fletcher will be like him. <laughs> you know, Fletcher will be be like people are like why? What is the age difference between Dexter, Vex, and Valkyrie? Consider Look, she's eighteen. She can make her own decisions. Okay. <laughs> I'm putting it on the list, but I hate it. <laughs> That is worse than the people who ship her with Skullduggery. Don't listen, worry, for, us, for us three, us three, I will be putting this in a little corner that no one's going to use. Lizzie can have it slap bang in the middle. Excuse me, we were all saying we would about when we were talking about how thirsty she was over him. Like, Yeah, she, I'm 30. That's fine. I'm 25 next week. I'm 25 I'm, I'm not now. I'm 29. I just keep, I'm trying to get into the habit of saying it. I'm, I'm, I'm 26. I'll be 27 in a couple of months. So it's fine. But, like, she's 18. She can Did you she say wants. hook up or make out? I said hook up, but make out works too. <laughs> I'm writing hook up. You said hook up. I'm writing hook up. I think I'd be less creeped out if they made out. 
Um, okay, on that same vein, Scapegrace and Thrasher will realise they're in love with each other. Okay. <laughs> David, Hannah, can you just make this a really, like, just put them all in all the bad spots? I'm just okay, you asked. You asked for me to have headcanons here, so this is what's Imagine happening. That wedding. It would be great. Scapegrace would be, just be really rude to Thrasher the entire time. I'd watch that wedding. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Can you imagine them shopping for wedding dresses? Yeah, he'd walk in and they'd be like, "Oh my god, you're you're beautiful. Have have dress, have dress." Yeah, I know, but you, like, I watch enough of these like say yes to the dress shows. They, they would be like, "No, I want a suit." Mm. Be like, but you've got a perfect body for a beautiful dress, skin and tie. And he's like, "Suit, suit." I am suit. a man. Suit. <laughs> All of them going, we can put you in a big fluffy one that makes you look like you're on top of a cake. No, suit. Suit. <laughs> suit. Good. Right, how many more? No. Three. Three. I'm trying to think of like people that I could like like prompt you to make ones from. So like China. What do you think is gonna happen with China? I was gonna say we don't have any for oh, China. She's gonna be the 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 head honcho. Well she's grand major already, so yes. That's what I meant. Turns um, so down the rest of the sanctuaries and tells them where they can shove it. Yes. I've kind of felt like she's done that already, though, hasn't she? Yeah, but in a more fun way. I still them... feel like she doesn't need to say it twice. Like, I feel like she was like, mm, yeah, but how badass, I've got this. Yeah, but how badass would it be if she just burst into, like, the grand sanctuary lot, eyes glowing, fists glowing, and going, try it? Like, Come into an island one more she time. She would never, because that is not state. That's not her style. Yeah, that's no, way more tannis. Hilarious. Come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. Which I adore. I'm going to put that, that one down just because I assume that if Tanith does anything badass, it's an easy point. Yeah, yeah. True, true. But yes, Lizzie, what do you think is going to happen with China? Oh. I'm just trying to prompt the things. Oh. Did I say something about China last time? I don't remember. Um, oh, oh no, this isn't me trying to prompt in the same uh, way as before. Literally, I'm just trying to help. Okay, so like, China. Is China is going to have a nap because she's knackered. She is. That. But after that, she is going to be the one that just gets... Just that China's going to have a nap. Just that she's going to get... Gonna have a nap. Okay, so I, I feel like Tina will get Valkyrie back because she had the yes. whole moment with Dark S and then they'll have a moment where Valkyrie breaks through to China. Gets Valkyrie back. Okay, one more. China has a nap. No, I'm not putting China has a nap. Can you put and a nap in the one with Valkyrie? Yes, oh, and, and, and a nap. Just like a little bracket. You know what? I tell you what, for Lizzie and I, I will put China gets Valkyrie back. For you two, I'll put China has an app. Cool. That'll do. And when you don't win, that will be why. <laughs> Come on, one more. I'm trying to think of not spoilery moments now. Yeah. Let me relook at the synopsis. Well, we've got Sanguine on the front cover. So is Sanguine gonna do something about the wedding again? Because he keeps talking no, about No, 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 no. The god killer weapons are gonna come into it, isn't it? Because now I've read the lesson seven and I'm yes. like, oh, you okay. sneaky little bitch. You sneaky little motherfucking bitch. Sanguine, you, 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 Tannis will cut you in half when she finds out, but you sneaky motherfucker. <laughs> so are we putting Sanguine uses god killers or are we gonna go Tannis finds out about god killers? I think, oh. Or I don't. Cut I don't your losses and just put God killers. Okay, fine. I don't think Sanguine will use them because I don't think he's hard enough to actually use them. He's so not he's not going to come and go. <laughs> I was just going to do that. I was just going to make the same joke. <laughs> I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. I missed that. <laughs> it didn't matter because Abby got the reaction she wanted, and I got the reaction I wanted. I'm really upset that my internet was like, no, you don't get to hear that. Um, I'm going to have to re-watch it. To <laughs> you said that Sanguine isn't hard enough to use the God Killer weapons. So I said, so he's not going to come and have a go. 
because he doesn't think he's hard enough. <laughs> yeah, right, which is why excellent reaction. Oh, that me. was good. I am I thank you. Um <laughs> also, I just wanted to say when he gets when he gets fucked up, when he goes to like turn off the machine thing, that also made me very happy when he was just hanging upside down. Mm. And Tans is like he won't be able to feel his legs anymore. <laughs> mm. Um, so, okay, I'll read through the 16, and like I said, I will make these into uh, bingo boards, and I will share them in the group chat with you, um, and I will also share them in the Discord, should anyone who's watching be in the Discord and want to get in on that. So we have Skullduggery Dies is number one on our list. Um, Stephanie gets a smack. Stephanie will use the scepter on Dark S. Alice is evil. Tanith is healed from her revenant. Fletcher makes a terrible relationship choice. Skullduggery is sarcastic. Uh, sparrows fly south for the winter. Malcolm has magic. Um, under the house, death pit. Um, Gordon gets sacrificed. Dexter Vex and Valkyrie hook up. <laughs> Hate that. Scapegrace and Thrasher get together. Uh, come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. China gets Valkyrie back slash has a nap. And God killers. <laughs> I love how most of it is just my insane brain. I, I love it. I love it. And thankfully... Okay, you um, said that it needed to be mostly you, because you're yeah, the one with the most can't contribute. Because not only that, I text Abby and was like, hey, this is a thing, right? And Abby was like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, really so glad I, I just, didn't mention it. Now I just want to stop reading all my Gothoba books and pick up the next Sardoggery one. But if I do that, I won't remember half of it by the time. No, we have, the problem. we have 20 days. We have 20 days of Gothoba left. I Read know. Gothoba books, and then on the second week of next month, I'm trying. Then we'll do the live show. I'm trying. I have chunky books. Okay? Yeah, you did choose chunky uh, books. That was foolish of you. Did. But this book is good, all right? So it's fine. I'd love to see that. Oh, Gothoba tangential. Yes. This was one of my reads. It's got short stories in. I have read. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yeah. I've not finished the book, Congrats. but I've read the short story. It is less spooky than I hoped. Yeah, yeah that's, well, that's because it's yeah, it's more of a classic and more of just like a, you know how it ends. So, but like speaking of Jekyll and Hyde, David Tennant's doing a TV series where he's playing both of them. Amazing. That was amazing. I'm playing Jekyll and Hyde. <laughs> if I just, I'd lean into it. <laughs> excited i get excited whenever david Tennant's gonna be in anything but there we go mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we i mentioned before that i recognize his voice mm. to a weird level oh speaking of recognizing voices uh lizzie just a heads up um the next two books apparently are with a different narrator not that you or i will notice at the speed that we listen to them but kira just thought you should let us know not again mm -hmm. not again i can't i can't deal with it anymore yeah. I get thrown through a loop every time anyone tells me that a new voice actor, voice, uh, actor has taken on the role. Because I'm like, no, they didn't. You're lying. <laughs> oh, oh, they did. Oh. Okay, I didn't realise. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. Well, on that note, anyway, is there anything you guys want to give a shout out to before I bring this amazing live to a close? This month, I'm doing a video every day. You know. Which is why when I mentioned a video before, I was like, I don't know when it came out because I've had one out every day. So if you want to see more of my face, what is wrong with you? But I have an October filled with things for you. See, I don't understand anyone who does a video in any month other than Feb. Why? Shortest month. Birthday month. Fair enough. It's still slightly insane considering you're moving house, job, and also having a birthday. Like it's just interesting content, I'm sure. No, no, nothing oh, related good. to the moving of the house nor the moving of the job. What should related to the birthday? You should have filmed a video of you building the bookshelves and putting your foot through it. I, well, I didn't. Right, I couldn't take the the DSLR down because it was too big, and I went down on the train by myself and then my parents were like no we're gonna leave that at the house it can go down when you go down the next weekend so i was filming on my crappy iphone 6 that doesn't have any memory so i have some b-roll but i can only film like 30 seconds and i have to upload it to the cloud and delete it mm -hmm. so there's no footage of me putting my foot in the, in the bookshelf but that would have been funny what and just seeing me sat there curled up like this crying next to it yeah, yeah. i'd watch that i would 
Uh, anyway, Becca. <laughs> um, check out the comic book sanctum. I've been doing everything to do with What If recently, and then I'm also going to be doing stuff on Venom and then The Eternals next month as well. So check that out if you are interested in Marvel Comics. Love that. And Lizzie? Yeah, not next week, the week after, uh, the 24th. It's Bevies and Books uh, monthly live show, which Becca is going to be part of, and obviously Hannah is too. Um, <laughs> and we're going to be discussing some horror books. So, um, and also drinking alcohol if you want and if you can and if you're able and if you're old enough. Um, <laughs> what a great tagline. I love that. If you can, if you want. All of the caveats. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's that's what we're doing. And I am trying to come back onto BookTube and all that good fun stuff. Because Yeah, I'm really it. like forcing Lizzie to make content at this point. <laughs> and I am there for the live stream with a vodka and coke. Yes. Yeah. Or a white Russian, one of the two. Uh, also, Kelly from the Velvet Library is also joining us. So it will be a right party on the 24th. We love to see On Turkish uh, 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 what's it called? Channel. <laughs> oh, blah, blah, blah. Love that. I should not be allowed to do any of this. <laughs> You're not meant to drink until the live show, not two weeks prior. Mm. Oh. I mean, I have not drink for a while. Um, but the cocktail is zombie brain. I don't know what's in it. Ask Hannah. <laughs> I'm going to send out the recipe and I'm so excited. It's mainly just syrups and then I think it's vodka and schnapps. But it's just no. really sweet. It's just really sweet. Honestly, that sounds perfect. I drink mm -hmm. like a teenage boy. Me too. I, speaking of speaking, like drinking like a teenage boy, I bought myself a new body wash from uh, Lush and I was in the shower that day where I was like, this smells really nice. Why is this taking me back to like house parties? It smells like a cheeky Vipto. <laughs> That's what it smells like. Uh, anyway, um, I'm obviously doing Gothoba at the moment, and we still have bookmarks. So if you go to the Waypoint website, you can get a cheeky bit of merch to commemorate taking part in Gothoba. Um, at the moment, demons are winning, point-wise, but considering there are three times the number um, of participants for the demon team, angel team are coming in strong, so... <laughs> It's gonna be interesting. Uh, Olivia has her live stream on Wednesday where she will be hanging out with some angels. And then next week, uh, next Saturday, I've got some demons and angels trying to escape a mansion. And we're gonna see who is the final girl in that situation. So that should be quite fun. Um, but other than that, I hope everyone who's watched this book had a really good time. I'm really excited for the next book. And I'll see you then. Bye. Bye. <laughs>